information comes to us packaged and distributed in many formats. Some of these are obvious from our daily experience. You can easily explain to a friend the differences between a book and a blog, or a CD and an MP3, right? A format is the type of source you're using, but in information terms, format also refers to specific ways information is organized, packaged, and distributed for us to use, how it is wrapped up, tied with a bow, and handed to us. Because creating these sources involves specific steps that relate to time, depth, and how the content is evaluated, we can say that a format is the result of a process. Here's an example of how information formats are largely defined by when and how they were created. Within hours of Hurricane Katrina's descent upon New Orleans, internet news sites, blogs, TV and radio reports were covering the damage. Over the following days, newspapers covered the event in more detail, adding layers to the story and considering related issues like the structure of the levee system and the state of emergency shelters. In the following weeks, magazines joined the coverage of Hurricane Katrina, weighing other issues such as the federal government's response. As months passed, academics began to write about what happened in New Orleans. Academic journals published articles relevant to their different disciplines, such as the roles that race and poverty played in the tragedy, the engineering difficulties in levee construction, and how local and federal governments manage natural disasters. Years on, books appeared on all aspects of the event. Finally, reference sources like encyclopedias started to include overviews of what happened in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, assimilating key facts and issues culled from the preceding news, magazine, journal, and book resources. Here's a different production model that shows how information is created in some academic disciplines. In this model, scholars respond to what happens in the lab or report on the results of other types of research. They start working on their ideas informally, by talking and emailing with close colleagues. Then they might share the preliminary results of their research by giving a poster or presentation at a conference. They might write an article and submit it to a journal for peer review. If the article is accepted, it will be published after it has been revised based on the reviewer's feedback. Publication in a peer-reviewed journal means that the research has entered the discourse of the discipline and other scholars will find that article when they do their own research and cite it in their bibliographies if they want to build on the idea. As you continue your education and begin researching topics in your major, you'll also start to learn how information flows through your discipline. Here is one more humorous information cycle. You can pause to read the cartoon if you want. Does this describe your grandma? This is the end of part one. So far we've learned that a format is not just the way that information is packaged and distributed to us, but it is also the result of the process of information production. Go on to part two to learn about characteristics of different information formats.